الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحابه أجمعين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله برمشة الله جل وعلا we are alive, which we have an opportunity to return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with Tawbah. To seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgiveness is always a golden opportunity. Every day that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us, it is to increase ourselves unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, I came across a question, a su'al that was posed on Facebook. And it was pertaining to the permissibility of or is it permissible to offer dua for pets? Yani Hayawan. Um we grow an affection, a love for our pets, domesticated pets, whether we have cats or different domesticated pets, um, we grow a fondness for them. And it's tragic when one of them uh passes away or anything like that. How do we deal with that? And what is the Islamic approach pertaining to it? I would like to, inshallah ta'ala, offer um, two questions or two answers to give us a better understanding whether or not it's permissible to offer dua on behalf of animals or pets that you might have. Um, specifically, after they pass away. Tell you the first question we're going to analyze here is Hukmu Dua al Hawanat the Rahmatabah the Motiha. We're going to talk about the ruling pertaining to offering supplication or dua for the animals with mercy after they have died or after its death. All right. So the question is how yumkin an naku rahimakallah the hayawanat al maita. Is it permissible for for us to say, may Allah have mercy on you to an animal, uh, a dead animal, meaning an animal that passed away. The ijabah, the answer is, uh, the Sheikh, you know, after praising Allah and saying salutations upon the Prophet and his family, he says, I'm a bad. He says, so first and foremost, he says that having mercy or showing mercy or displaying mercy towards animals, pets, etc. And having a rifq, a type of gentleness, all right, uh, shown towards them while they are alive, meaning during their lives, then this is in an encouraging or desire of fear. This is something that is encouraging within Islam to display and show mercy towards animals, while they are alive, okay? And that which indicate that is what is stated in this hadith here. And this beautiful hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, Those who show mercy, all right, to one another, then Allah show mercy unto them. So then he says, Show mercy to whoever's on the earth, and Allah will show mercy, uh, men for samat, right? Yarahamakumu men for samat, and those who are in the heavens will show mercy unto you, all right? <clears throat> show mercy to those who are on the earth, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Those in the heaven will show mercy unto you. This hadith is collected by Abu Dawood and has been graded authentic by Sheikh Al Avani. Um, the second hadith, or another hadith, is washatu in rahmatu. Sheikh al he also graded this hadith that comes in the Muslim of Imam Ahmed uh, about the shat, all right? If you have mercy on it, then may Allah have mercy on you. Now remember, this is while they are alive, okay? This is pertaining to the animals while they are alive, okay? Um, As for making dua lil hayawanat, so as for offering dua after they are dead, meaning 
seeking Allah's mercy upon them after they die, like we do for one another. Rahimahullah, Rahimahullah. May Allah have mercy upon him. May Allah have mercy upon her. After they die, then, and the Sheikh says, We do not know of any sunnah that has reached us authentically that this is something that was done. Nor do we have any reports from the Salaf that they have adopted this practice after the animals pass away or the pets pass away that they seek mercy for that particular animal afterwards. Right? So they understand that the hayawan, the animals, there are those who are not brought to account after its death, except for what is connected to mudhalim, um, uh, such as like a, an oppressive thing, something that's being run. ثُمِّ يَكُونَ تَرَابٍ وَمُضَالِمْ لَا شَفَاعَ فِيهِ وَلَا يَسْقَطُهَا دُعَاؤُكَ بِالرَّحْمَةِ لِمَا فِيهَا مِنْ حَقِّ الدُّوَابِ الْأُخْرَى so, alhamdulillah, we can see from this answer here that pretty much showing mercy and uh, showing mercy to the animals, displaying mercy to the pets while they are alive is something that is encouraged based off the hadith that we have heard earlier. So it's something that is definitely encouraging. Now, as far as offering dua after they done, then the sheikh saying he don't know of any reports from the salaf or any hadith that comes in the sunnah where this is something that is encouraging. Now, the next question that we're going to look at also pertaining to this issue is what is known as Erstit Ja. I did a talk, I think about a year or two ago, um, on the verses in the Quran, we showed a Baqarah talking about Erstit Ja uh, and what is that. So, we might not be familiar with the term Erstit Ja, um, this particular term. N nonetheless, it means, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. It is that statement. To Allah we belong and to Allah we return. All right, so it is that particular statement. And there's a ruling pertaining to when that statement should be said. And it should not be said only when someone passes away. Sort of like a custom, we are accustomed to saying that statement when someone died. But that's not what is understood from that statement in the authenticated ahadith. And even in the ayat itself, it doesn't mention that it should just be said when people die. All right, so we want to make sure we get a better understanding of that. First of all, the question is the expression inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un how you can call her in the mota hayawanat is it possible that we can also utter this particular statement at the time uh let's say when an animal or a pet passes away can we still can we say inna lillahi wa inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un can we say unto Allah to Allah we belong unto Allah to Allah we, Allah we return right the answer first and foremost a mashru' li man usib Right? So the first thing is that it's legislated for the one who has been afflicted with a calamity. Even if that calamity is small or minute. It's not a big mag it's not a big calamity, even if it's small, but the fact that it's a calamity nonetheless, right? Then the person should be what? Remain patient and also hope for Allah's reward for remaining patient. And also he shall utter or she shall utter the istirja, what we're talking about here. And then he says that's what that is. Call it Ibn Uthameen Rahimahullah. Shaykh Uthameen he says about this. He says, He said, Why musiba? Meaning that this is incumbent upon any believer, no matter what calamity he or she faces. And Yaqulu ma athna Allahu alayhi ala qa'ilihi That this person should say that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions here When Allah says Alladheena idha asabatum musiba Qalu inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un Allah said those who when they are tried with a calamity Or have been afflicted with a calamity They say to Allah we belong and to him we return Wa kama thabit fil hadith sahih And the shaykh continues Just as it has been established in the authentic hadith And the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called that the Prophet, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ma min Muslim, yusabi musibah thumma yakul Allahum rajirni fi musibati wa aqlif li khayrim minha illa ajrukullah wa aqlif lahu khayrim minha. Collected by Muslim, but the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that there is not a Muslim who is afflicted with a calamity, then say, O oh Allah, ajirni fi musibati, right? Wa aqlif li khayrim minha. O oh Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, 
a jirani, yani, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala jirani, uh, to protect me or reward me during my trial or my, my calamity and substitute it with that which is better than it and give me a substitute better than the actual calamity. And accept that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward this individual or protect this individual and also substitute him with a better um, thing than that which he is going to far as his calamity. All right, intihab min fatawa nur al darb. This is Sheikh Uthameen. He ended that pretty much mentioning that statement there. You might say, well, okay, what is all of this pertaining to? This is pertaining to iristitja, saying, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. It is, should be said whenever a person is going through a trial, no matter what type of calamity, a person should be able to see that. All right? For either can a Muslim yamliku hawanan, all right? Muhtamni man ka behemat al anam, for mat, for inna hum asaba asiba bihi fi mali. So, for example, whenever we have a Muslim who owns some animals, for example, own a pet or animals, like in this case, he might own cattle, say if a person owns cows, so forth like that, and one of the cows passes away, then he's afflicted with a calamity in his wealth, right? Because he makes money economically off the cows, right? Yashra'u lahu ihtisab ajli. It's okay in this particular um, incident for him to say in the lahi wa in the ilahi rajun due to this particular uh, incident that take place. He says we'll call the raw ibn Abi Shaiba, we send a Sahih and with an authentic uh, chain from Sa'ib and Musayyib that he says and caught a kubalun na'li umar. This is interesting here. So, uh, Umar ibn Khattab, all right, had a split or something wrong with the sandal strap, all right, of a sandal, all right, and he said, because of this. And they say, Oh, Amir, Amir Mu'mineen, all right, Afi Kubali, it's Afi Kubali Na'alik, call Na'am, Kulu Shay, meaning that you're going to say this even regarding to your sandal? He said, Yes, Na'am, Kulu Shay in Asaba Mu'min. He says, Anything which afflicts a believer that he dislike, right, then is a musibah. All right, interesting because this hadith actually shows us what is a, a calamity. Then it is a musiba. He says, "We call a court to be rahimahullah a musiba a nukwa to yang kabaha and sad when sagra." So a musiba is anything that yani that strikes a person. It don't matter if it's small. That's a musiba. All right. Ama ida kana had the hayawan mimma yahrum wknaahu aw kana mautuhu leisa musiba fil hakika mithu an yakuna mamlukan li ghairi aw la yakuna mamlukan li ahad bal huwa min hayawanat barriyah fala yadhhar wajhu al istirja wa istisabu fi mautu mithl dhalik so then he mentions here alhamdulillah that if the case be that the animal or the pet um is not owned by the particular person it's owned by someone else for example all right um and then is not a calamity to that person in reality because it's someone else's or it's no one's, but it's not his. All right. He says that, and in this case, uh, the animal is from the creation, and it is not apparent that he should say in the lillahi wa in the ilahi rajiun wa istisabu fi motu mithli that. Right. Um, during the death of this particular animal, lakin lau anahu tadkurumot. He says, however, if he wants to, you know, bring to mind or remember due to the death. Meaning he want to bring to, to mind uh, the death. Death is on his, because of the death of this animal or the death of this pet. Then he can then he can actually say it. Because now he is remembering or he's calling the mind and is bringing to mind the, the death of a creation. And this can be a means of returning, that they are returning back to their Lord. He says, For mithu had the best be. He says, The example of this or the likes of this, there is no problem with it, inshallah. It is from the bab of, you know, pondering and remembering that which is legislated, uh, re re legislated remembering. Call according to Rahimahullah, Kolahu inna lillah. 
So Qurtubi now gives us some tafsir, some explanation behind the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal, Inna lillah, inna lillah, and to Allah we belong, inna lillah. Listen what Qurtubi says here. He says, saying inna lillah is what? He says, Iqra, he says here, Tawheedun wa iqraru bil ubudiyya wal mulk. He says that to say the statement inna lillah, when you say that statement, brothers and sisters, Qurtubi is saying that this statement exemplifies uh, Tawheed, okay? And it iqraru bil ubudiyya, okay? And it confirms the servitude and wal mulk, all right? And the fact that you are under Allah's dominion, that you are owned by Allah Jalla wa ala, it shows that servitude. That's when you say, Inna lillah. And it's important because we need to understand the ethar of Tawheed. All right? And a lot of times when you study certain things, the ulama, they talks about benefits, bawa'id, and he talks about ethers. Um, They also talk about things that have an effect. And you should know that because it gives you a more um, in, um, intensive insight to what you're doing. So for example here, what is the effects of saying Irastija, we should know that. Khortubi has given us that insight. When we say Inna Lillah, then this is Tawheed and we are confirming our servitude and the fact that we are owned by Allah. All right? That's the effects of that. It should bear, it should bear something on us. And when we say the second half, which is what Inna Ilayhi Rajirun, and to Allah we return. إِقْرَارُ بِالْحُلْقِ عَلَىٰ أَنفُوسِنَا وَالْبُعْثِ مِنْ كُبُورِنَا وَالْيَقِينِ أَنْ رُجُوعَ أَمْرُ قُلِّ إِلَيْ كَمَا هُوَ لَهُ انْتِهَا This is beautiful right here. Allahu Akbar. So he's saying that we are acknowledging the fact that we will be destroyed. Meaning, حُلْقُ عَلَىٰ أَنفُوسِنَا Alright? And we will be resurrected from our graves. وَالْبُعْثِ مِنْ كُبُورِنَا and Rujur Amr, and that all the affairs return back to him, meaning Allah Azza wa Jal, kama huwa lahu, all right, as it is his. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who is al -Malik. So it is his dominion. So all of those things, we are affirming that. The fact that we are affirming that we will be what? We will be destroyed. In other words, when we say we're destroyed, we're going to die. We will be resurrected from our graves. All of that is in that statement when you say, wa inna ilayhi raja'un. You are acknowledging this. So we believe as a part of our Iman, the six pillars of Iman, that we believe in what? The Ba'ath. We believe in the resurrection. the Mot. We believe in being resurrected at the death. This is one of our um, beliefs and eternal beliefs. And it's not one of those beliefs. It's one of the creeds, the tenets of our creed. It's not something that is um, up to any discussion or debate. Every believer must believe in the resurrection. Every believer must believe in the resurrection. And if anyone denies the resurrection, who say that they are a believer, then they have disbelief. Do you understand? The ulama, they laid this out clearly in the books of Al-Qa'id, the books of, of Creed that you will find. So believing in the resurrection is something that is tantamount. All right? Sheikh Ibn Ibaz, and I found this is very interesting. Look what he's going to say here. قال الشيخ ابن باز رحمه الله he says الكافر إذا مات فلا بس أن نقول إن لله وإن إليه راجعون والحمد لله he says that if a non-believer was to pass away it is no problem that we say to the death of a non-believer إن لله وإن إليه راجعون you're not seeking mercy for the believer I mean for the non-believer you're not asking Allah to forgive the non-believer you're not asking the law to expand the grave of the non-believer, etc. All you acknowledging the fact is what we say in court to be saying, what the statement is saying. You acknowledging what? That that non-believer is a servant of Allah and he's returning back to his creator. All right? And he will be resurrected, etc., etc. Right? This is what you're acknowledging. So you can say when a non-believer pass, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. All right? According to Sheikh Amin Ibas, Rahim Allah, he said, there's no problem that you can say that. But alhamdulillah. He says, well, I'll count him and guide her. Even if the, the, the non-believer do not be from your uh, your relatives. 
Because all people are going to return back to Allah. We don't believe that non-believers are going to go somewhere different other than where uh, the, the believers, meaning that they're not going to return back to Allah. Everyone is going to return back to Allah. We believe that, right? He says, um, And all of mankind is, Allah, is under Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dominion. Allah owns them, right? He said there is no problem with that. And, and, and that's important, man, to understand the ilm like this, where the ulama explains to us. Because sometimes when we say, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un, we normally only say that uh, when a death have, have occurred. And it's interesting that that should be said when any calamity you're going through. As we've seen in the case of Umar ibn Khattab, even with him having a hole in the sandal, uh, he says, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. And when asked about that, he was saying, yes, um, any any uh, thing that afflicts a, a, a believer, a calamity that afflicts a believer that he dislikes or causes displeasure to him, then it, you know, it's, it's a musibah. It's a musibah. And that's important for us to understand. So we can say, inna lillahi raji'un, if we lost our job, um, for example. We can say, inna lillahi uh, wa inna ilayhi raji'un, if, for example, our car breaks down, or um, if, you know, uh, our shirt ripped, or we have you know, certain things that might have happened. Any calamity, no matter on what level it is, we can say, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. As far as the question whether or not it's permissible to seek, um, whether or not it's permissible to um, make dua, offer dua, then we already answered that earlier in the talk, that no, it's not um, according to what the shaykh is saying. There is no report, either from the sunnah or the after of the salaf, that they have practiced doing that. But you can show mercy to the animals while they are alive and you can make the statement after they death in the lahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un if for one you own the animal and it affects you that becomes a musibah uh two if it's a means of a remembrance for you far as um you're remembering the death of a creation and the fact that they will return back to their lord then in this case, it's no problem with you saying inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. I hope that we made this issue clear. I know it seems like a minute issue, but it's something that someone want to know. And it's a real good question. When I saw that on Facebook, I said, let me go ahead and try to do something on it, inshallah. It's a real good question. Whether you make dua for your pets. I mean, because some of us have pets. Believe it or not, a lot of, often a lot of Muslims have dogs. Whether they observe the actual rules of having a dog, Allah best, Allahu a'lam. I'm not their judge here. But I'm just saying, a lot of Muslims have pets. So what happened, you know, if something happened to their pet? Islam covers that issue. Whatever we said that was incorrect in our translation, I'm pretty sure that there were some, there was many mistakes, not some. It was definitely for ourselves the shaitan. What we said, correct us from Allah, who jalla wa ala, subhanakallahum, bihamdik, ashadu ala, an astakul, tu'ilik, jazakallah,